G'day, welcome back to Down the Shed with Byron. And today, we're replacing the rear brakes on the Mazda CX-7. Tools for the job, you can get away with a couple of basic sockets, 14, 17, 21 mil, a couple of basic screwdrivers, Phillips head and his flat blade, a couple of hammers, uh, you'll need some rags, a few consumables, brake clean, WD-40, bit of Loctite, things that make it easier. The one person brake bleeding bottle, a brake caliper tool. If you've got one of these impact screwdrivers, I'll, um, I'll show you the process for that after. Uh, parts for the job, I'm using just some brake rotors and brake pads. With a chock under the front wheel, I like to crack the wheel nuts while the wheel's on the ground. Then jacking up the car under the rear K-frame, just by the diff. I like to place a couple of jack stands underneath. I place these just under the lower control arm pivot points on the K-frame. Once that's all secure, making sure you do a bit of a wriggle test, make sure it's not going to go anywhere. After removing the rear wheel, placing that under the car for the just in case. Moving on to popping the bonnet, just to inspect the level and condition of your brake fluid. Now if you're just pushing the pistons back in, you want to make sure uh, you monitor this, because you don't want that to overflow. Now we're up to the rear brakes. What I like to start by doing is lifting the caliper up, popping the brake pads out, and pushing that piston back in. This is where you'll need the 14mm socket or spanner, just by cracking this lower bolt off. Rotating that caliper up will put a bit of tension on that brake line, but it's okay. Now we'll pop those brake pads out. So with an old brake shoe, I put it back in place. I use that tool for pushing the brake piston back in. Put a bit of tension on it there. Now you can just send it, but what happens then, it pushes all that old brake fluid back up through the hosing, back into the master cylinder. So what I do, I just rotate it around Remove the dust cover off the bleed nipple. Fit the one person bleed nipple tool, brake bleeding tool. I'll just crack the nipple. So now that will just force the brake fluid up and out. So by screwing the tool in, it's pushing against the brake pad, which is then pushing the piston in and forcing the dirty brake fluid out. Now the piston's all the way home. What we'll do is we'll just lock off that bleed nipple. Remove the one person brake bleeding bottle out of the way, remove the caliper tool and your brake pad and we'll pull the caliper off now. At this stage if you're just doing a pad change you could probably uh, swap them over now but as I was saying I'm changing out the rotors. To remove the caliper there's two bolts that hold the bracket in place, 17mm socket you'll need crack them off. You may need a breaker bar for this. It may be tight. Removing the brake rotor. Spray a bit of WD-40 just around the center hub section. 
let that soak in while you try and undo these two screws. What I'll try and show you is using the impact screwdriver to undo one and a normal screwdriver on the other, just in case you don't have that tool. So holding the Phillips head impact drive screwdriver into the screw, giving the impact screwdriver a hit on the end as holding it in an undo direction. Should undo it. So with your largest Phillips head screwdriver you got, um, one you don't mind hitting with a hammer, put it into the screw, hit the end of the screwdriver with the hammer and hold your hand in a rotating position, obviously undoing, and it should undo. Now it doesn't always come undone that easy, so if you do have any dramas and it won't come out, give it another belt, literally with a hammer and a punch, so it um, cracks the threads. Here comes another fun part. To get the rotor off, it'll more than likely be seized onto the hub and you'll find your park brake inside here will be um, either there'll be a lip worn away or yeah, it'll just be hard to get off. So if you're not using the rotors again, Give it a decent hit with a hammer. If you do want to reuse them, or you're getting them machined, or try and use a soft face hammer. So hit it three o'clock, nine o'clock, 12, and just keep working it. And that should separate off the center here. Like that. Now if that doesn't work for you, use a block of wood and a decent hammer and give it a knock in each spot, same thing again. Now I'm in luck, that's come off. You're not always that lucky to be able to slide it straight off. You have to undo the park brake to bring the shoes in, so that way you can um, slide the rotor off. So I'll show you that now. Your park brake adjusting screw is that little puppy there. So that's why I had it lined up initially with the adjusting hole there so I could get to it. So if you are stuck on the part brake, pop this little rubber grommet out with your screwdriver. Now this is on the left hand side of the car. On the bottom of the sprocket, I'll show you a close up in a minute. Just wind that gear back up. So see how I'm pushing down to push that gear around that way. So on the right hand side it'll be the opposite. So you go from the top and bring it back down. But you'll work it out because uh, what happens is it'll get tight you won't be able to rotate the disc at all. So now you can picture it without the disc there. What I was doing as I was rotating this little gear around, which was then winding in um, this adjuster here, which is bringing the shoes in. At this stage, you're gonna be checking the park brake lining to make sure it's in good condition and serviceable. If so, yeah, run it again. Um, if not, try and source a new one and replace that. Give this area clean I mean, you can uh, get away with cleaning the face of the hub now, the wire brush, and yeah, give it a good soak and brake clean and give it a wipe. What I like to do now now you don't need to on these rotors as it says on the box, but I like to just give it a quick spray with brake clean and a wipe over. Because um, it does have a anti-corrosive paint film on it. Line up your bolt holes.
Give it a bit of a rotate. You can hear it just dragging on that part brake. So I'm pretty happy with that. What we'll do, I'll just line it up with that adjuster, bang those two screws in. With those screws done up tight, you can put a bit of Loctite on them if you want. Now I'll just adjust the handbrake up. Hopefully you understand what I was trying to do with that gear in there, which is pushing the brake shoes out onto the inside of this um, disc. So, as you can hear, now that's dragging. So what I'll do, I'll just back it off a couple of notches and that should be good to go. Once you're happy with that, put the little bung back in. I like to give the rotor another squirt. Time to move back into the caliper. What I'm gonna do here, is just pop these retaining clips off and give these areas here a bit of a clean up with brake clean and a wire brush. So with all the brackets all cleaned up, relocate them. Reinstall your brake caliper bracket to position. I like to use a little bit of Loctite, medium strength on these bolts. And these can be a little tricky to line up, but once you got it, you got it. Making sure these bolts are tight. In the brake pad kit, you get obviously brake pads and a little bit of lube. Uh, read the instructions and make sure you're clear on what to do there. Once you've torn the packet open, which is, I think, childproof, just get a, whoop, a dob of it out. And just on the ends here, where the brakes are actually going to be moving, I just apply a thin smear just around there. And there. So hopefully you can see what I'm talking about there. Like this. So do that on each end, and I'll show you why. Reinstall the brake pads. And I'll start by putting them in on a little bit of an angle. Pushes against the spring. Hopefully you can see that. Push it in. There we go. Now you see where you put that lube? It's sitting inside that retaining plate. And what happens is those pads over time will start to move and vibrate. That's where you can get sometimes your brake squeal from. So if you've got those little sections lubed up, we'll do the same on the inside and then Put the caliper down. Sorry, I forgot to mention, making sure your slides move freely. So where your caliper slides in and out, at the top and bottom. If they don't, remove them and apply some brake lubrication on them. Bringing the caliper back down, just watching the piston here onto that brake pad and the other side of the caliper here onto the brake pad here. That slide has got a little flat section. So you need to guide that into place. There we go. Reinstall that brake caliper bolt.
Again, I put a touch of medium strength Loctite on it. Tighten that up. What I'll do now is I'll go jump in the car, push my foot on the brake pedal, which will then push that piston out and preload up these brake pads. Then just double checking the brake fluid level. As you can see, it's pretty dirty, so I'll probably do a uh, flush on this next. Let us know if you need a video on that. With the wheel back on, making sure the wheel nuts are tight when the wheel is back on the ground. So next stage for this is to bed the brakes in, which is roughly 10 um, applications of drive it at about 50 kilometers an hour, medium brake pressure, uh, slow down to about 10 k's an hour, then do that, yeah, 10 times. Um, and that's pretty much done. So that's the next stage and take it easy for the next 200 kilometers in the wife's car, yeah, I'll let her know. Anyway, dirty thumbs up, thanks for watching. Um, this is just how I do the brakes. If there's any other tips we can give others, throw it in the comments, otherwise, yeah, take it easy.